Well, I think we can start. So, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to our participants in Germany. A very warm welcome to this kickoff of the Energy Challenge Germany 2023, German Startups for the Energy Transition in Chile. My name is Mara Ortiz. I am project manager at the Cham uh, German Chilean Chamber of Commerce, and I have the great honor today to moderate the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Germany. But I won't be alone. My colleagues Annika Schüttler, Project Leader in Energy and Sustainability at AHK Chile, and Ursula Brendeke, Deputy Director of the State of Bavaria Office for South America, will moderate the panels later. This event will take place in English and will be recorded. So if you want to watch it again or share it with some interested startups you may know, we will send you the link later. If you have any questions during the event, please feel free to use the chat. Today, we will present our acceleration program, the Energy Challenge, and we will officially open the application period for all the energy startups from Germany willing to come to Chile. So stay tuned and get prepared because we are not just going to meet some of the startup winners of the previous edition of the Energy Challenges, but also some experts from the energy and innovation sector in Chile. That means two great panels. But first of all, let me give you some context and information about this acceleration program. From 2019, Chile and Germany are cooperating to enhance the energy transition through the Energy Alliance, the Energy Partnership Chile Alemania. Fostering innovation to achieve the energy transition is one of the most important uses, uh, issues of both um, governments. And in this context, the HK Chile, in collaboration with the State of Bavaria Office for South America, and the Panas GIZ um, Chile and expanded from Fundacion Chile, are organizing the Energy Challenge. The aim of the program is to present German energy startups to representatives of the Chilean industry and, of course, open business opportunities. But we will get more details about the program later. Last but not least, I would like to thank our partners who are involved in this initiative, the Energy Partnership Chile Alemania, the GIZ Chile, Expander from Fundacion Chile, German Entrepreneurship, Axel Accelerator, SpinLab, Centrum Digitalisierung Bayern, Bay Startup, the German Mexican Chamber of Commerce, and of course, the Fed Federal Ministry for Economics and Climate Action, and the Chilean Ministry of Energy. And today, we are very happy to have uh, Juan Pablo Searle in representation of the Chilean Ministry of Energy with us. And he will give us some welcome words. So, hello, Juan Pedro. Are you there? Hi, Can you turn on your camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, welcome. I did already. Okay, Perfect. shall I start? Yeah, I hand over to you. Okay, super, thank you. Um, well, Alex Santander sent his apologies. Uh, he was called to a meeting with our minister and also our minister sent regards to all and wishes success in, in, in this event. So thanks so much for inviting us. Um, let me begin by thanking you all for this invitation, especially the Energy Partnership Initiative, the GISET, with Germany, a country with which we have had a long-standing relationship in the field of energy cooperation. There's no doubt that climate change action is on us now, is on everyone, industry, people, governments, international cooperation. We have to stop looking for more evidence and start moving to solutions. Transformational changes are required and at unprecedented speed if we are to keep the global atmospheric temperature rise from exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius by mid-century. Providing this situation to our country, the efforts to accelerate our own transition are enormous, especially, especially in the energy sector, the main GAG emitter, but at the same time, the one where the greatest opportunities for mitigation and innovation are concentrated. Thankfully, we're confident that our country is heading in the right direction. First, we have committed to be carbon neutral by 2050 or even before 2050. We acquired this obligation by ratifying the Paris Agreement and further reinforced it under the Climate Change Act, both of which require the participation of all stakeholders, 
each and every one of us, regardless of whether we are under public or private hands. Second, the transition in the electricity sector has been more accelerated than planned, with coal phase out being our flagship measure to facilitate greater penetration of renewable energy, including green hydrogen. But we certainly need to move faster and thus take advantage of all the opportunities that will allow us to realize the full technical potential we have in renewable energy, 80 times more than what we have today. With this challenge on our shoulders, we need to implement several solutions, not just over the electricity sector, which in itself will be highly demanding of new infrastructure, especially transmission lines, and state-of-the-art technologies, including energy storage and automation of our electrical grid. We must also promote the transformation in other sectors, starting in those that are major energy consumers. We need to electrify all finer energy consumption or wherever it is technologically feasible for the time being. We need to accelerate the transition to green technologies. We need to transform the abilities of the electricity market to realize and accommodate the needs of the system instantly. We need more distributed generation and connect it, connect it to the grid. But emissions are not the only thing that needs our attention and energy as we are aware that a low carbon transition comes with undesired effects in the short term including job losses and impacts in the territory, but with great benefits in the long term, including inter alia positive impacts on GDP, employment, and the economy as a whole. Readiness and human capacity, research and development and substantial investments are needed for a sustained energy transition. The statement in this moment could be that the energy transition is a necessity for the country, but the way to get it, it matters. We only know a fraction of the future, but we're certain that the green hydrogen, for instance, will open several opportunities as a product, as a service, as a whole new market that could transform Chile from a fuel importer to an energy exporter. We're also certain that we can develop new features to ensure that the operation of the system uh, can go well under high percentage of renewal and demand uncertainty. For instance, including reconversion of actual coal-fired power plants to a different energy supply chain like NLG, synthetic fuels, or replace coal consumption for a cannot battery with molten salt as example. Or we could even move toward new models embracing machine learning or deep learning to support the transformation of our electrical system into a more digital one digital or digital one with unified services and necessities to make the above a reality the regulatory and public policy framework is important and this is the third aspect that we wanted to highlight today the ministry of energy is promoted is promoting a series of legal and policy initiatives that have favored the energy transition in the sector, such as the energy policy, the energy efficiency law, and the recent approved solid biofuels law, um, and has given great urgency to laws that will be essential for a sustained and sustainable transition, such as the laws on energy storage, renewable energy quota, and green hydrogen. To finalize, I would like to end my welcoming remarks by emphasizing the importance of entrepreneurship in supporting the energy transition. Startups are an important springboard for technological innovation, something that Chile needs more and more. We need to become a laboratory for cutting edge technologies and clean fuels and to gradually become an important reference in these matters. I thank you or we thank you again for this opportunity and we remain very attentive to today's debate and to follow up and to follow it up sorry with our German part so thank you very much uh, now the floor goes to you Mark thanks yeah thank you very much for your words Juan Pedro and also for presenting the perspective and also the lines of action of the ministry uh, well now I would like to welcome Kira Potowski from the Association of the German Chambers of Commerce and Industry, 
who is leading the Department of Innovation, Startups and Sustainability. And she will give us also some insights and some welcome words about the energy transition within the new global context. Kira, are you there? Yes, thank you, Mark. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you. Then Perfect. the floor is yours, Kira. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, a warm welcome here. Um, actually, I'm not in Berlin right now. I'm in Hamburg at a similar event. Um, this event is talking about twin transition, also a very interesting topic, uh, the combination of um, digitalization and uh, sustainability. Um, and it's actually directed to German and Finnish companies. So here the German um, Chamber of Finland is organizing this event. Um, so it's actually a very nice, um, well, I have been uh, getting this whole uh, impulses uh, the whole day. And I would just um, like to, um, uh, Ma, before I go on, I would like to ask if the uh, participants have access to the chat and I can post some links while also speaking. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, so, well, um, the topic um, is energy, energy transition in the global world, which actually um, I can um, maybe talk a little bit about uh, the German case. Uh, you have been uh, hearing a lot about um, Germany, who, which is uh, experience, experiencing the need and urge for the energy transition from gas and fossil fuels to an efficient and effective mix of different energy sources as um, yeah, with the Ukraine war and Russia turning off the gas supply, um, suddenly Germany had to face a shortage of gas, which is still making up almost 80% of energy demand in the German industry. And uh, what I learned um, some days ago, even half of German households heat with gas. Uh, so even myself in Berlin, I'm heating with gas. And it's getting to be um, very, um, well, that's what the experts say, um, quite freezy uh, the next coming month uh, here in Germany. Uh, and what is um, very, uh, or oh, what happened uh, was that um, the Germany storage caverns, maybe you've heard about it in February, they stood at 30% full, meaning they were 70% empty. And suddenly um, our new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, and our German econ economic uh, minister, they had to travel the whole world, um, actually doing some treat uh, or deals uh, with countries uh, which are very, seeing very quite uh, critical uh, concerning human rights and environmental aspects. However, um, yeah, what was the learning of all this? Um, a healthy mix of different sources, of different energy sources, uh, whether then depending on one uh, source uh, from mainly one country, which has been um, the uh, Russia being our uh, main gas uh, supplier for more than yeah a decade. Um, so German industry cut its gas consumption um, actually by nearly fifth, uh, fifth um, nearly a fifth of last month, and um, that created a lead or a soaring energy price. So to cope with high prices and costs, the industry operators uh, charged more for their output, obviously, um, meaning that the end consumer had to pay much more. And this created um, a whole um, yeah, um, problem uh, in which it was unclear whether households would continue and households and industry and uh, government, etc., would continue to voluntarily turn um, lower the uh, um, heating um, in the cold seasons. Um, I'm not going to mention that much of gas prices, uh, and I'm, I don't want to just stick to the gas, but however, um, I think that's mainly a very big uh, problem we are facing, not only in Germany, um, all over the world since the Ukraine war. Um, but yeah, we experienced gas spot prices averaged 100 euros per megawatt hour between October uh, 2021 and 2022. They even peaked up to 24 euros, or you can say almost 24, uh, 240, sorry, 240 dollars uh, in August. So crazy, um, uh, yeah, crazy, crazy ecosystem we are um, living in right now. So solutions obviously are becoming more and more. Um, I mean, they are already. Um, essential, but they're becoming more and more uh, essential. And with solutions, I mean efficient um, solutions that uh, actually do speak of an energy mix 
and uh, where measurements and the uh, combination with digital solutions are key. So here's where you as startups um, are coming in. And uh, I was asked to just uh, talk uh, five minutes about the German ecosystem of startups um, as well. And here in Germany, we have more than 70,000 startups um, with 20 unicorns amongst them, not only dedicating themselves to um, renewable energies and green energy transition. However, uh, Germany has one of the most attractive um, ecosystems in Europe. And um, having said this, we actually do have um, a whole um, ecosystem in which um, we, uh, uh, in 2020, um, startups secured more than 1.6 million jobs in Germany. So it's very important to keep on um, promoting them and um, yeah, um, doing a lot of effort. And for this, um, actually, there's uh, one agency, the German Trade Agency, maybe you've heard of them. They developed um, 12 digital hubs, and I will um, send you the link since I have it here. And you can, while I'm continuing, uh, also have a look at this initiative. And I think this uh, initiative combining many startups, incubators, combining um, investors is actually a very interesting uh, sorry, a very interesting um, page to look at. So I will just put it uh, to all. So you probably um, see it right now. Um, so in this um, digital hub initiative, it's called um, creating partnerships by connecting SMEs and corporations with the newest innovators um, from science and startup scene is key. And um, actually that's what um, also the uh, um, many German chambers of commerce abroad are uh, approaching. They're approaching German companies and um, trying to show them the whole uh, innovation and uh, startup scene in their local countries. Um, so I think this is a very um, ideal um, combination. And um, yeah, by connecting them, um, we connect the uh, people looking for solutions with people having the solutions. So um, when we talk about uh, also studies uh, in, in Germany, we love anal analysis, we love um, doing studies uh, on that. And there's also one um, German startup um, association and this German startup association, which I do have to admit, we also love to just have them in German. Um, I will just... Uh, type in the um, chat anyways. I'm sorry, it's in German. I was not able to translate um, 100 pages uh, into Spanish or English. And actually it's not my, um, they don't pay me for that. But I can just um, mention to you that um, here in this um, analysis, they do actually try to show the whole um, startup ecosystem um, in Germany. And there's also an analysis of the green energy um, startups, um, which are particularly focusing on, on green transition and green energy. I will also post it to you. And if you have yeah, some time, you can maybe use Deeple or you use uh, some other translator to at least um, have the key information. And um, having said this, um, what is also um, very interesting concerning the green startup monitor, and this will be also my last point, is um, that because I understand uh, all of you are actually more focusing on uh, sustainable solutions and green tech, um, that for at least in, in Germany, 30% of the startups of the 70,000 uh, German startups are dedicated themselves to green solutions. And um, they also see themselves much more innovative than startups um, being, yeah, looking at um, other solutions. And what are the main sectors in Germany um, interesting um, where the green startups are actually, um, yeah, very um, um, working in? Obviously, the energy and electricity sector, agriculture, um, as well as textile, consumer goods, um, um, how do you say that? Uh, well, logistics, um, the automobile, automobile industry, uh, as well as um, food and beverage, um, 
pharma and um, chemistry sector. So I think um, there's a good uh, mix of sectors interesting to look at. And maybe you've asked yourself, if I go to Germany, where should I go to? And um, there's always the three, four main hubs, um, startup hubs in Germany being mentioned, which is one being Berlin, Hamburg, as well as Munich. And now Stuttgart, uh, which is also in the southern part of Germany, uh, becoming more and more uh, yeah, interesting uh, for the um, German startup scene. Because in the south southern part of Germany, you have industry. And so startups, they love obviously being close to the biggest um, industry performers and, for example, energy consumers. Um, talking of uh, Bosch, Siemens, um, BMW, all the um, automotive sector uh, uh, companies you find in the southern part. So if you ever think of um, also looking for business opportunities, I really suggest to have a look at the first link I sent you, the um, digital hub initiative of the German Trade and Invest Agency because that's their main ob objective to attract startups uh, from abroad. And um, yeah, having said this, I hope I gave you a short um, and a small overview of the German um, ecosystem and what are we facing now um, in Germany the next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kira. Um, thank you for presenting the German perspectives and the actual challenges in view of the well actual context. There is still lots to do and a lot of opportunities in the energy sector for startups. Well, thank you. And now we are reaching our first panel discussion and we are very happy to have three experts of the Chilean energy innovation ecosystem with us. So let me introduce you Tomás Ridey, Innovation and Digital Transformation Manager in Transelect Ventures, Andreas Eisfelder, Head of New Energy Business in Latin America at Siemens, and Brian Walsh. I think Brian is joining us from the States. Um, welcome, he's Head of Copec Wind Garage. Copec and this Wind panel Garage. will be moderated by my colleague Annika Schüttler, Project Leader in Energy and Sustainability at AHK Chile. And I will just hand over to you, Annika. Thank you very much, Mar, and I'm very happy to, to be moderating this panel with representatives from different segments of the energy industry, its distribution, but it's also uh, new sources of energy, energy efficiency. So I'm very much looking forward to this little discussion that we're going to have. As we already heard uh, from the ministry, as well as from uh, the the IHK from Kida, um, there are many challenges that we are facing today uh, in view of the energy transition. And I would like to ask you, and any of you three can uh, answer first, um, when looking at the energy transition from an industry perspective, what are really the main challenges that we are facing if we look at the short term? Um, I don't know who wants to go first. I'm happy to go first. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Brian. So, yeah, just quick introduction. I'm uh, Brian Walsh. I am here in the U.S. I'm, I'm the head of the Wind uh, Wind Ventures, uh, which is a, a separate group from the Wind Garage, but we we collaborate with them uh, every day. So, um, to answer your question, I think the, the main challenge, short term or long term, frankly, for me, uh, is urgency. Um, you know, this is a um, I. I've been in clean, clean tech or climate tech for, for 20 years. And what we have today is just fundamentally different uh, than what we had maybe 20 years ago, um, where today, you know, the problem on the global stage is really well defined. And it's really, you know, this is, this is quite rare where we have a problem that's global, that's quantified and time bound. And so from a problem solving perspective, it's, it, it doesn't get any better for entrepreneurs. Uh, or frankly, corporates trying to solve this because the problem is well articulated. The the issue, I think, the challenge is just that that time bound. There's not a lot of time, right, to reduce emissions by 40% by 2030. Um, this there's many challenges within that. Um, uh, you know, for one, not all geographies will participate as they should, and secondly, not all sectors will participate as they should. So those who do participate, it's really not 40% reduction. It's actually more than that to make up for those who um, will not uh, respond to the, to the call, if you will. 
So I just think we need to always do more. We just need to recognize it and always do what what we're doing here today is, is sharing opinions and and, um, and nurturing the, the 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 German and the Chilean ecosystem because I think they're vitally important. But for me, the main challenge is just urgency. We need we need to always be pushing. Well, if we think about urgency, as we also heard from Kida, obviously the German situation at the moment uh, shows how urgent it is to find a different solution uh, in order to guarantee security also in energy terms. We think about urgency and if we look at the fact that the three companies have somehow now a uh, corporate venture program in that sense, uh, what is the role that you play in order to sort of um, attend this urgency and help startups to maybe grow faster and really uh, deliver the solutions to the energy market? Thomas, maybe you can comment on this. Yes, well, thank you to the chamber first for the invitation and to all the startups for joining us. I really agree with Brian. Uh, the urgency is the first thing that we need to, to cover. And not only from the perspective of knowing, but also applying it. We need to really apply. We all know what is happening. We all know what to do, but we need tools to be implemented as soon as we can. Uh, in terms of the energy transmission. Thomas. Yeah, now he is. Okay, sorry. Silence. Uh, we need to implement tools faster. We need to do operation of the grid uh, in, in a dynamic form. We still have a lot of room to optimize the grids, the transmission grids, the distribution grids. We need a lot of facilities to be built. And as the, the big corporations will be uh, covering that part, but we need the startups to cover all of the optimization side of what is a uh, we need to implement on top of that, on top of the facilities, the velocity, the solutions, the technology. We always think in Translate, these uh, company startups relationship, like the companies are a big aircraft carrier, slow to move, big, and the startups are these aircrafts landing and taking off all the time with new solutions with a lot of velocity. So we are really giving the room, the space for them to accelerate themselves and also help us, help all of us to really do this implementation of concrete solutions that help us to optimize and, and deploy faster solutions for decarbonization of the grid. So from what you're saying, Tomas, is, uh, why I what I understand is uh, that obviously big corporations are slower in doing innovations. So that's why you also, for example, as Transelec have created Transelec Ventures, uh, which then helps again startups to grow faster. You, I guess you help them with financing or do you also help them sort of uh, with an acceleration program? How do you work and uh, really help them to innovate faster than what Transelec Insight could do? Yes. Uh, well, we are just starting. With, there's no other big uh, venture in the transmission sector specifically. So we are just starting with a venture client model where we do pilots and we became a customer of some startups. We are just finishing our first call actually. So we will do pilots and if they go goes well, we will implement them in all Translate. Maybe later we can co uh, scale them their solutions up commercially in other markets. Uh, it will depend on, on the results, but we are just doing these open calls first to be still connected to the core business of Translate. And if it goes well with the results, we, it's expected that we uh, move to a corporate venture capital and, and we start to invest later in startups. But for now, we are connecting them to, to actual problems that we have. We test, and if, if, if it goes well, we scale them up together. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And yes, um, from the point of view of Siemens Energy, what is the role that startups are playing today in order to help us face or uh, solve the challenges of the energy transition? I think as the, the previous speakers mentioned, we need uh, speed, uh, we need innovation, and uh, we uh, especially need also 
I would say a different set of solutions to uh, tackle this energy transition and these challenges, um, because next to the speed, we really need to get things uh, green. We need to uh, say, you know, utilize this energy crisis, not to fall back into more conventional technologies and do more of the same, which uh, will not help us to keep the uh, Paris climate targets and, and keep global warming below two degrees uh, Celsius compared to the pre-industrial time, hopefully, hopefully less. So the startups um, um, also need to bring in, I would say, the voice of the um, uh, grassroots initiatives of um, social inclusion to, to make uh, not only the right things, but to make things right. And uh, we as an industry have an obligation not only to um, um, make sure that we develop um, greener technologies um, uh, fastly into the market, but also in, in the right social context, uh, inclusion, and considering, uh, I would say, um, um, credibility by, you know, initiatives like um, Fridays for Future, like uh, other grassroots initiatives that are closely watching that we utilize uh, this um, level of investment, this next wave of uh, large infrastructure and capital intensive investments um, to make it uh, also right for future generations. So I think that is what we pay a lot of attention to um, from, from the startup sector. Thank you, Andreas. Um, Ryan, I don't know how long Wind Garage is also already working with startups, but from the experience that you have had until now, what are the main obstacles that you see for startups to grow in the energy sector? Yeah, um, just a little bit of history. So we, uh, we started this and we started talking about this in 2018. We formalized what we call WIND, which includes WIND Ventures, which is my team here in San Francisco. We're the strategic venture capital group. And then the WIND Garage are, let's say they're the partnering teams and they're local in uh, Latin America, in Chile and in, in Bogota, Colombia. So they get to think about new ideas and they get to think about uh, launching new businesses, but also they get to partner with the investments that we make. So that, that's how our model works. Um, and so your question is uh, obstacles to scale within Latin America. Yes. Well, in this case, uh, Latin America, it's easier to get it down to a market. Yeah. Well, I think I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of things going for energy startups. Uh, and I hit on that a little bit um, uh, in my earlier comment. But back in the day when I started out, it was very much a pool. Right. So it was passion driven. It was emotional driven saying we should do this, but no one really knows what to do. But here's a new technology. We should just do this. Right. So it was push, push, push. It's very different now because it's time bound and it's defined what we have to do by when. And so it's very much a pull. Corporates are creating markets. Um, policies are creating markets. Um, and everyone's sort of headed in the right direction. So it's a nice sort of you know pull technology into it. So that's a very good thing. Um, that said, to do that well, you still need really good governance, you still need really good capital, you still need, um, you know, you, you have to recognize startups are usually doing something for the very first time, right? That's what makes them high risk startups. Um, and so if they succeed, it's a big, it's a big impact and big success for those who are involved, but most don't actually succeed, right? But then they inspire others to do something slightly different and perhaps they succeed. So it's always a worthwhile endeavor. Um, and so I think the challenge is just company building. It's saying, listen, this is a wonderful time to be an energy startup, wonderful time. Uh, but there's a lot of different types of capital, right? Infrastructure, which the previous panel has said, there's different types of venture capital. It gets very messy. And if you believe Silicon Valley Bank that studies it, we're in the era of diversification and specialization of venture capital. So no longer is it dominated by these big generalist funds in Sand Hill Road. You have these micro funds and they all have a different specialty. Our wind ventures, for example, our value beyond capital is unfair access to Latin America, just as an example. So you have to pick your capital correctly because that then influences your board, which is your really important governance mechanism, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd say how you set up, you have to be very, not careful, but very deliberate. And that will help you mitigate the risks and the challenges ahead of you. 
Thank you, uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, that's quite right. I mean, uh, what we also sorted out in the study that we did is definitely governance is a very important thing. You need clear rules for startups in the energy sector to grow. And on the other hand is also always financing. And uh, as you said, now we are much more specialized. We have much more specialized funds. And there, Thomas, I would like to ask you, as you are in the transmission sector, and from what I understand, what you search is first of all startups that solve problems that you as a transmission uh, company have. How do you uh, sort of launch your challenges or how do you find these startups that can help you solve these problems that you have? Right, we just did our first call on September and we were supported by Imagine who is a, a company here in Chile specialized to corporate venturing startups. So they helped us to, to launch this, this call to find the right startups. And we, it ended up really well. We had more than 19 countries, I think, uh, applying. So it was a really good result. So we launched uh, this call open, like anybody can, can apply through a form. And also imagine did the work of scouting some specific startups. And it's expected that we continue with this. Of course, we'll do a second and a third call on 2023. So uh, the calls will be um, still run by us. Anybody can apply in, in our webpage and all the, the challenges are, are we, will be changing. In this particular call, we did um, a data challenge, a noise challenge for facilities that are emitting too, too, no, too much noise, and also a sustainable transmission challenge to, um, to help us to improve some operational ma maintenance and things. Uh, so it's expected later that we, that we launch different calls, different challenges, and always open to more than these calls, we are always open to receive startups. We are always doing pilots. We are always uh, helping also startups, even if we are not doing a pilot. So the invitation is open to, to anybody to, to contact us and promote their solutions with us. And for the last question that you asked, uh, Ryan, and in this particular case for us in transmission and trans ventures in our segment, I will say that uh, something that startups may face is uh, that they need to have patience. Uh, we are slow decision makers. We are slow. Uh, the regulation also, the government is not fast. Always the startups are moving ahead of governments, ahead of regulation, ahead of, ahead of uh, corporates. So they need really patience because Brian is right. We have the, the, the solutions what it's need to to be done really clear but uh, it's interesting or crazy but it's not just go and do it you will still face too many processes too slow too many slow decision makers so the patience is the key i i guess it's it's a challenge for us also to to break that that uh, that problems actually when it's Intentionally, I think Brian, you can confirm confirm it is, but wind is intentionally uh, another uh, arm of of the big corporation because of this, because of this low decision making and all of that. So the patience is also a, a thing to face. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Andreas, uh, as we heard already from Thomas, one of the main reasons why uh, corporates are now sort of. Uh, opening this corporate venturing is in order to to fasten uh, the innovation processes is this the same for Siemens energy or how does Siemens energy mm -hmm. relate to the startup world right Annika um, I think again that um, Siemens energy uh, um, who by the way we just celebrated our 175th anniversary as, as Siemens and now Siemens Energy and we've been at the forefront of R&D and uh, innovation in electrical um, automation digitalization technologies um, 
Uh, but as um, you know, uh, the core business of uh, Siemens Energy, that's where we also focus our R&D initiatives. But to make an energy transition happen, really along the whole value chain, I think it requires a lot of eyes and ears along different parts of this value chain, this collaboration. That's exactly where these startups come in because you know they think out of the box. Uh, they are also prepared to do things differently. I think that is exactly the type of um, outside in perspective we would uh, uh, we love to hear from from those uh, joint ventures and uh, same as uh, the other panelists already mentioned. I think the trade is um, this type of innovation versus also our domain know how because the obstacles you were asking for that. Um, the startups will have in Latin America in the energy sector or any other part of the world's energy sector is both uh, written and unwritten market entry barriers. Um, and, and by this, I mean domain know-how. You, you, you need to know how, how this industry works and it's highly regulated um, um, industry. Uh, and it's rightfully so because our daily life and infrastructure and um, you know keep the trains uh, and, and hospitals running rely on this. So I think this is also what um, the a collaboration between multinationals and, and startups uh, can achieve together. Thank you, Andreas. I think, well, for all the startups out there, it's always a good uh, message to hear that uh, corporates in that sense are very much open to uh, get your ideas, to relate to the startup world. And that there's a big or uh, new opportunity, I guess, well, it's quite new. It, it's, at least in Chile, this is a new trend now that uh, corporate venturing is sort of taking off. So uh, you can always approach the corporates. And now I have one last question comes from the public. There are a few questions in the chat, but in view of the time, I will just stick to the first one uh, that goes to Brian and is about uh, what role or how important you see digitalization as part of the ch uh, challenges of the energy transition. Uh, yeah, I mean, that fairly easy response for me. It's, it's, it's very important. Um, and so, you know, within the energy space, I think you see many different types of innovations that do different important things. Um, you know, converse to digital, you've got deep tech hardware, right? And so we see that in EV charging, we see that in carbon capture, we see sort of new devices and new, new, um, new hardware um, innovations that are really critical. But on top of those hardware has to be software. It has to be digital. So there's never ever anything Nowadays, it lacks the digital, but then of course you can have digital on its own to add efficiencies and automation through a factory or in a building. Um, and so it's uh, it's critically important. And actually, I think for Latin America, um, uh, there's this there's this wonderful appetite to gain efficiency and productivity um, for many different reasons. And so I think a lot of the regional innovation tends to be digital by nature. Um, and it's just a suggestion or, or an indication that there's a tremendous opportunity for tremendous impact through digital innovation. But, but you know, you always have digital. Some of it will come with hardware and some of it will not, will not but important. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks to the three of you. Uh, for us, it's very important to establish these relations also with uh, venture capitals, but also in general with corporates that are interested in innovative startups, because as Mario already said, we are leading these energy challenges as a, now it's not any more pilot program because it's already the second version of the Energy Challenge Germany, where we search for startups, innovative startups in the energy sector, in that case, from Germany to enter the Chilean market. So for us, it's very interesting also to know people who are willing or interested in meeting up with them and maybe also financing, which is always something that is required. So thank you very much for giving us your opinion and your view on the importance of startups uh, for the energy transition. Thank you very much. And I hand over to Mar. Thank you, Annika. Thank you for your moderation. Um, and also from my side, thank you to Tomas, Brian and Andreas also for this very interesting panel and very valuable insights. Um, we still have some points in our program, so let's continue. And now with the second panel, business opportunities for the energy startups in phase of the energy transition. And for this panel, um, I am happy to welcome the winners of our previous editions of the Energy Challenge Germany and Chile, and the winner of the challenge organized by the German-Mexican Chamber of Commerce in the framework on, of the Energy Partnership Mexico-Germany. My colleague Ursula Brendecke, Deputy Director of the Bavaria Office 
um, State of Bavaria Office for South America will moderate uh, the second panel and introduce the panelists. So Ursula, I give the floor to you and I Thank wish you all a great panel. Thank you very much, uh, Mara, for your introduction. Hello to everyone. Um, it's actually um, uh, very rewarding for us to be organizing together again an energy challenge, which allows us uh, as a federal um, state office for economic development to continue uh, networking Bavaria, Germany with Chile and South America. And also uh, very um, glad to be moderating um, this panel today. Um, we are here, as you mentioned, Mar, with four startups that are not only operating in the day-to-day -day, uh, business of the energy sector, but they, uh, they are all um, winners of previous editions of uh, energy challenges in Chile, in Mexico and Germany. So the idea for the next 20 minutes is to get to know about the business opportunities, um four startups in phase uh for the energy uh, or, or of the energy transition uh with the experiences with the lessons learned uh of, of these startups let me introduce you our panelists uh we have here uh, today thomas kubach he's founder of adi motors i'm seeing you thomas sir um we have eski Eskan, founder of ecoligo both of them uh, of both startups are from germany we also have Andres Lopez, uh, the CEO of Ecometric from Chile. And last but not least, uh, Adan Ramirez, the CEO of, of Green Fluidex um, from Mexico. Let's start directly uh, with our first question, Thomas, um, to you. Um, as far as we know, Ari Motor has the goal to um, enter uh, into the Chilean market, into the South American market. So Thomas, tell us uh, why Chile? Uh, what have you found here that you haven't seen uh, in other markets, for instance? Well, the, the first reason uh, for Chile was um, um, we know that Chile is a very, very long and big country. And uh, usually you would say uh, with, uh, electric vehicles, uh, the field where we are in, uh, are not working in, in that environment. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, we find out that of course, there are already electric vehicles uh, working. Electric vehicles are used by our target group, which is the exactly the same as in, in Germany. And so, we we actually uh, get this this information. We might thought it it could be like that, but now um, with as an as an finalist of this of this program, we find out yes, exactly this is the way and. We could use this information for our customers in, in Germany as well, just to say, look, even in Chile, in such a big country, they you're using electric vehicles. So it was a uh, very, very good experience to find out what happened on this market here and how we can uh, transist this to, to, to the German market. Thank you, Thomas. And Eski, um, you are a German startup, but though with uh, already experienced in operating in the Chilean market for quite some time now. So with a European, with a, a German perspective, how mature, how ready do you find the Chilean market to face the energy transition? Is the local market actually ready, open for innovative solutions like yours? <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, Ursula. First of all, and I want—I would like to just to, um, correct something that I'm not the founder of Ecoligo, but the, one of the oldest uh, employee. Um, Sorry so, for that. <laughs> no, no, no problem. And uh, for, um, yeah, for your question, like uh, I can truly believe that the Chilean market is ready to ready to lead the energy transition in South America. And uh, looking at my experience in Chile, I have seen two uh, important things. First of all, the regulatory environment for the different topics like uh, health and safety or standards related to new technologies. And um, probably this is due to the, the mining industry in Chile is very mature. So especially in comparison to the other emerging markets that Ecoligo is operating. So we are in Southeast Asia, we are in Africa, globally in emerging markets, uh, we have the same business uh, model where we provide energy as a service to the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, 
so this is very mature in Chile. So I could say like this is very good and also more specific to our um, field of um, business where we work with the energy supply to the businesses. Net metering law uh, is created a good market condition. So it was really positive. And second, um, what we have seen also the technical partners uh, that we are working in um, Chile have already required skill set and capability to implement the successful projects. So they are very professional and we are very happy with the quality and the amount of qualified partners to find in Chile. Um, so I would say that, yeah, definitely Chile is a good market to lead the energy transition. Thank you very much, Eski, and interesting the point that you mentioned, because I was thinking to ask in that way uh, my uh, next question to Andres, uh, because Andres Ecometric is a startup that uh, was born in Chile and has already imported clients in, in the country. How would you evaluate the Chilean market, not only for local, but only for international startup? And the question also related to what Eski uh, already mentioned, could you imagine possible collaborations? Um, she spoke about uh, partners and, and uh, possible collaboration with Chilean, with German startup to accompany the entry into the market? Yes, uh, okay, uh, Uchi, nice to see you again. Uh, well, our goal in Ecometric is to support the, the, the companies to release the impact on the communities uh, using artificial intelligence and IoT, uh, creating uh, visual uh, sentinels uh, to monitoring noise and shadow flicker effects in, in wind parks, for instance. So for us, the, the Chilean ecosystem for a startup is very important, it's well developed. As you see, so you see there are companies that have the venture, venture capital for big companies for, for the startups. So we, we, we think that there is a, a huge opportunities here in Chile. Uh, we have a, all our services we have developed with partner, in partnership with a, a big companies like Enel, like Colbun, uh, like uh, AS Chile and WPD. Uh, so we are, I think that we have plenty of space here in Chile to collaborate uh, between Chilean and German uh, startups, uh, inclu including also Chilean companies, big companies, and probably uh, big companies in Germany. Uh, because uh, uh, we, I think that we here in Chile, we can create and develop markets for a specific solution, even they are not already uh, being used. So we think that um, with our experience in the Energy Challenge Chile, we, haven't, uh, we have found a lot of opportunities for collaboration between German and Chilean startups. Thank you, Andres, for your perspective. And um, over to you, um, Adan. In your case, um, you are born and are specialized in the Mexican market, but also with some important rewards that took you to show your solutions in other continents in a more or more distant mm -hmm. market uh, from here. So changing a little bit the direction in Latin America and traveling to the north in the north of uh, direction. How do you see the opportunities in the energy market from a health environment and sustainable cities perspective that it's actually your um, sector. Yeah, thank you. Also, great, great question. Uh, so, I mean, in a in a in a quick really introduction, I mean, in our case, we are a biotech company where we are helping to accelerate the transition of sustainable cities through regenerative facades. So, in our case, we are working with market from the real estate and architects. So, on that way, is that this kind of mar market that is now uh, looking for these energy solutions is growing really quickly also here in Latin America and also in Mexico, where basically by the pandemics has like accelerating all these, uh, trying to look for these new solutions because now the people and the market is trying to look for solutions that also more than energy efficiency is also looking for helping to their health and also for these sustainable trends. So basically now they are looking to have like a, a recovery from the pandemics, but now growing in this uh, sustainability and sustainability uh, solutions. 
So now the opportunity is growing. Also for another things, for example, in our case of Mexico, that I think that is something like the same in Chile, that the earthquakes in the, in the, in the case of uh, buildings also is accelerated, that they are looking how to retrofit and renovate their buildings. But now that's why they are looking for these solutions that could help them in order to get more energy efficiency, but at the same time to comply with uh, the more than the trends for the things that the clients are looking to live in a health in a health uh, housing on some buildings that have like these uh, offices that comply with sustainability and all these green trends. So basically, the opportunities is growing. Yeah, surely. And also, I think that uh, the energy solution is here not only to comply to, to save more energy, but I think that here the energy solution is to help to this uh, health regeneration for the people that is now looking after the pandemics. Interesting. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Um, back to you, Thomas. Um, you came uh, to Chile and South America in the framework of, an, of the Energy Challenge Germany 2021. So in order to explore the Chilean market, to understand it, uh, get to know the ecosystem, the local players here, how was this experience? Tell us a little bit about that. What did you find? Which stakeholders have you found here? Um, what was your, your experience there? First of all, it was a really uh, warm, warm welcome. Even it was colder than in Germany uh, from the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, nevertheless, I, I, have, I haven't had the experience to travel within summertime to the to the south of uh, of the world, more or less. So this was yes. really, really yeah. a nice experience and and, and great experience. And um, um, all the people we we talked to were people you selected, yeah, like the the Bavarian South American office um, did a very very good job in in selecting the right person we can talk to because um it was in very good preparation in the beginning really uh, i mean uh, we we had we had a very intense contact to each other um you you, you did a very good job in researching the right companies the right persons to talk to and in the end i really have to say uh, i i got a really really good picture on the chilean market on the opportunities and within that really short time period, because I, I really didn't extend the, the time to, to, to stay there, unfortunately, in, in Chile, even it was quite short, I had a really, really good and intense time to, to talk with people who, have in, who were in the same mindset, who, who, who could answer my questions. And uh, yeah, it was really amazing. It was really uh, great. I didn't expect that. Uh, because uh, well you you do some of these um, uh, business trips and sometimes you you meet people who are interesting or not and here everyone was on its own uh, and very interesting person to talk to and and lots of questions open questions were 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 answered so I really have to recommend to to do that yeah so it's 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 a really a good experience um, from from business side and from personal side as well. Thank you, um, Thomas. Um, <laughs> and um, Eski, um, considering that you have already done an entry market process in the country and you ha have already um, have an office here in, in Chile, which uh, way or in which way um, have contributed to you the Energy Challenge Initiative and also the possibility to be an exhibitor, exhibitor and uh, at the Trade uh, Fair Expo North 2021, the meetings that we organized for you. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience there. How could you, or, or if you could establish new business contact with stakeholders also, uh, could you target? Um, tell us about that experience. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, the participation to Exponor was a, a great opportunity to see the overall um, the overall picture of the, how Chilean market is um, um, getting ready for the energy transition. I think because we had the opportunity to present our business model to important stakeholders and to create awareness uh, on the importance of the innovation considering the green energy technologies. 
And um, mining is not our uh, main target group. So the, um, uh, we use the opportunity in Exponor more to get in contact with the bigger uh, suppliers in the energy sector. So that was very useful. We identified good contacts and uh, customers. Absolutely. And um, like Thomas also mentioned, uh, the main advantage was also besides Exponor to uh, participate in the meetings organized by um, you. It was very organized and we had the really good level of the clients in uh, individual meetings. What I was surprised mostly also in, uh, in Chile, maybe it's related to the market also, the clients are very well educated in terms of the technology. So they um, immediately, they show interest in the uh, business that you are uh, proposing. So that was um, very uh, good. And we have established different uh, business contacts and we started the negotiations already in different uh, projects together with those contacts. So it was very useful for us. Um, Thank you. Well, um, all of the experience, uh, experiences so far are, are very positive. The answers weren't a range uh, for the audience, uh, <laughs> uh, just for you to know. And um, Andres, um, uh, through the Energy Challenge Program, you travel the other way around. You travel to Germany and have participated um, at the Bits and Pretzels, Europe's uh, leading founder festival, you hold uh, hold networking meetings that we uh, organize tailor made uh, for for Ecometric. Um, how was that experience? Did you that immersion agenda allow you uh, to have new tools for a I don't know just a reloaded perspective on how to face the energy transition based on what Germany? is right now working on uh, on that uh, on that way on that sense yes well i have a, a similar experience as uh, ari and sd uh, very busy agenda very very dynamic it was a, a very great time there we we went to the brits and pretzel in munich and also to the uh, <coughs> wind energy conference in in hamburg so for in Bits and Pretzel, we have an opportunity to meet uh, venture capitals, similar startups like we, we have. And, and also we have uh, the opportunity to find potential users for our services in Bits and Pretzel. And then we, we took a, a six hour trip to, to Hamburg uh, by train. And, and then we uh, attended there the, the wind, wind Energy Conference. And also we had the opportunity to, to meet some potential users and, and other companies similar to Ecometric in order to, to have a, a collaboration, potential collaboration in the future. So we are still working with them and we are in contact trying to find the way to, to work together. Uh, so for us, uh, this, uh, the, 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 these uh, opportunities and also the, the, the time this Germany is facing now, given that uh, the, the gas restrictions and all the energy transition to renewable energy uh, is, a, I think that is a very big opportunity for us as a, a Chilean startup trying to help in this, in this moment of the energy transition uh, using our services. So I, I think that in general, of course, uh, it was a, a very good experience there. We have very good uh, meetings and also we have previous meetings Virtually, virtually, so it was a complete trip, a very, very useful, useful for 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 us. So, of course, um, I I agree with uh, Ari and Essie that we we have a similar experience there. <laughs> Thank you. And Alan, in your case, um, the interaction uh, with Germany was through different um, tailor-made uh, trainings and workshops. It wasn't a trip. There was more like training and, and workshop. Um, but answering challenges that your startup and market were facing. So what was the, your, the contribution from Germany, uh, from the German organization, from the German technologies uh, on that sense, in that sense? Um, have you find in Germany uh, best practices, best possible solution or possible solutions um, for, for, for your um, startup? 
Yeah, totally. In fact, it's it's very interesting that we are alumni from the Axel Accelerator program in Germany. I mean, one of the partners now that now I know that you have. So I mean, since 2017 that we were part of this program, it was our first opportunity to reach like the, the German market and how to understand more about this. So basically with the growing market here in Latin America for these energy solutions, we understood there that the awareness for sustainability, but more than that, to have the highest standards uh, complying with uh, different laws, uh, qualification and all this stuff. Uh, it uh, get us like the, under, uh, the, the knowledge on how to apply all these high standards from Germany, but now to Latin America. So on that way, we can give like this value now for the companies here in Latin America and to show them that having like this now of uh, new standards and related with sustainability, we could get, give, give them more value than uh, traditional solutions. So on that way is that we understand that from Germany, we can give like this culture, uh, but more than this culture, uh, all these standardizations and all these laws and all this way to innovate and to give and to try to bring all these uh, things to, to Latin America and to implement here. And on that way, we know very well that if we try to do this on this way, we can give more, um, uh, be being more competitive here in Latin America. So I think that that's that's how since the beginning we understood very well how to combine like this uh, German culture and also this Latin America culture in order to give like more value for our clients. So that's why since the beginning we get like this uh, connection with Germany and it's. It's really nice. I mean, to give like on this knowledge from from them, and also to apply here, and vice versa. I think. So. Thank you, Adan, uh, because it's interesting. Uh, because I we I um, moderating this panel, but we from our organization see a lot of potential uh, for you to um, work together with um, local startups, with local organizations, in order to enter. Um, the, the South American market. So uh, we have um, to, to wrap uh, the session up because we are running out of time, but I would like um, to, to ask you um, one more uh, question. It's actually not a question. It's a, a sentence, a recommendation, one statement from your side, a short one um, for the audience, for the startups that are interested and, and, and to enter into the South American market. Um, Ari, um, Ari Motors or Thomas, let's uh, start with you, since you were the first one. Thomas, what would, would be your, um, yeah, uh, sentence recommendation slash is, recommendation? Uh, yeah. The recommendation yeah. is definitely uh, do it. Uh, don't think, uh, should I do it or should I don't do it? Uh, just do it. Uh, apply for the program. It, it's worth. And well, if you're if, if you're not elected, no matter what, but you, you have tried it and um, don't wait for it. Just do it and uh, you will see it. It will, it will be a great experience for you and your business. <laughs> Thank you. Eski? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I can second uh, Thomas, I guess, like, uh, I think from our experience, Chile is also very good to market to start if you want to um, start your business in Latin America, so you can start in Chile because it's easy to enter the market, it's easy to uh, uh, regulation and the price um, yeah, and seek the opportunity to get the part of the good institution like uh, uh, AHA or the German institution. So. Thank you. Um, Andres? No, nothing to say. With this team of uh, you, uh, Annika, Mar, and Pamela, uh, you will have a wonderful experience in, in Chile if you are selected. So let's go participate. Thank you. And Adan? From your side? Yeah, surely. Uh, apply. So I think that uh, basically in a few words, big opportunities, big opportunities and big alliance is waiting for you here to grow in your startup really quickly. So yeah, you have to apply. And uh, thank you very much. Um, big up, uh, virtual applause for, for all our panelists. Thank you for, for joining us today and to the audience, to the startups. We hope we can give you um, some hints and uh, about the, not only about the market, but also uh, from uh, the program and can motivate you to, to apply um, to the initiative.
Mar, um, over to you, the floor, back to you. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you for moderating this very interesting panel. And a uh, very special thanks also to our guests, Thomas, Eski, Andres, and Adan for your statements. It is always a pleasure to see you again. And I'm sure we have motivated some startups to come to Latin America. <laughs> so thank you to all of you. And let's come to the next point. Um, I've read already some questions in the chat and now it's time to present the Energy Challenge Germany 2023. And for this presentation, I will give the floor to Michael Schmidt from the GIZ and representatives of the Energy Partnership Chile Alemania. So Michael, we are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, can you just confirm if you hear me well? Yeah, we can hear Perfect. you, we can see you. Yes, so uh, given the fact that we're already advanced in time, I will try to make it, make it short. Um, basically, this is about uh, showing to you, um, just a second, how you can apply, who can apply, uh, and what. Michel, I is, think we, yeah. we are seeing your screen, but just, ah, now, okay, now it's, yes? okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. So, yes, this is about short presentation, who can apply and how to apply and what is awaiting you. Uh, first of all, thanks to all <coughs> the team of uh, <coughs> the AHK Chile and also the, the varying representation here in Latin America for the great work you have done in the last uh, round of the energy challenge to Chile and also to Germany. Also thanks to all these great partners that you can, can see down there um, in our key visual. Um, just very quickly, I give you an introduction about what is the energy challenge, uh, the program itself, what is the agenda for the winners and also the agenda for the next, uh, for the process um, after this kickoff. And also uh, um, what is the Expo Min, which will be the, the trade fair or the mining fair for innovation where the winners uh, will be traveling to. Um, the energy challenge between G Chile and Germany exists uh, since 2019. Um, has been, um, we have been working for a more, bit more than three years now, as Mar said before. Um, we are working on many different uh, aspects of the energy transition, uh, um, exchange of um, knowledge, exchange of experiences. And uh, an important part for us is innovation, because uh, of course we need to change our culture of living also for the co combat uh, against climate change, but we need uh, entrepreneurship, innovation, and we meet uh, people with innovative spirits in both countries in this case, uh, all around the world as well. Um, but in this case, we're talking about um, the collaboration between Chile and Germany, and especially German startups who, startups who can help with the energy, energy transition here in Chile. And what kind of startups are we looking for? Um, as said, it was said before by Kira, uh, we are working or we're thinking about the area of green green startups, green startups in, um, in the field of energy. So it can be a startup that contributes to the energy transition in energy efficiency uh, in, in grids and in smart grids, receiving grids, um, energy and heat storage, uh, industry 4.0, uh, everything that has to be with e-mobility and smart mobility green and also blue hydrogen to a certain extent, um, renewable energy generation, renewable energy hardware, uh, everything that goes around this, um, efficient information management and optimization, life cycle analysis, digital technologies, uh, new materials, and also startups that can offer other innovative, innovative business models. Um, and what do we offer? Uh, for the winners, we offer the possibility to, to pitch here in Chile in front of industry leaders and investors, founders, multipliers, research, and also uh, representatives from academia. Um, as a winner, you can be part of Chile's top innovation and energy hubs, and you can get in touch with high level representatives, representatives as I said before. And in a moment, uh, we will show you also how uh, what these um, hub participants are called. 
um, you will get a, you will get access exclusive access to Chile's entrepreneurial ecosystem and meet up with decision makers in a collaborative environment. And uh, our colleagues and we will also uh, foster and give you the opportunity to match with other promising startups and um, to meet uh, people that are looking into a similar direction as you. Um, the program covers in general, and that also answers some of the questions we had in the chat before. It covers your flight from Germany to Chile. Uh, it covers one week uh, of, um, of hotel stay here in Chile. Um, it gives you a pers personalized agenda of one week and uh, also the ticket for Expo Min. And Expo Min is the largest mining show in Latin America. And it's a space that promotes transfer of knowledge, uh, innovation, um, and contributes to the increase of productivity in the mining sector. But uh, as the mining sector also is a big part of the energy uh, uh, ecosystem, um, it's a great spot to pitch there and to present uh, yourselves and to make new contacts. Here you can see what uh, what uh, uh, Eski and and um, Thomas, who just uh, before asked, uh, talked to us in the panel, have experienced this June. They went to Chile uh, and visited Expo Noa in Antofagasta. Here on the picture, you can see them. On the, on the top, you can see uh, the design of their stand. So they had their own stand there at the, at the fair Expo Noa. And uh, as I said before, it was a very valuable experience for them. Uh, who can apply. Uh, our prerequisite, prerequisite for startups who want to apply is they need to have a validated solution yet. Um, they have a, need to have a, a business model and an old product or a service on the market. Um, at least they need a Series A funding. Um, and that means they are facing the necessity to scale up and to work with strategic partners. Um, they need to have the capacity capacity to engage with major industry partners um, and the capacity to work with other uh, other partners. And of course, uh, as we are working in an international uh, environment, um, you need to be able to pitch in English and answer questions uh, and attend meetings uh, working with the language uh, English. So now you saw who can apply, and now here you see the, the timeline. Timeline. So today is our kickoff. Um, from today on, the applications are open. Uh, the link uh, will be put into the chat, I think, from our colleagues in a second. Um, it's a it's a web page where you can put all your information, where you can download the application guidelines to make sure uh, you. Uh, you um, offer all the important information. Then in January, at the end of January, we will have another event that is the Demo Day, where all the applicants who are selected to be part of the challenge can pitch. And then in this event also, a jury will um, select the winners. And these winners will travel to Chile in April, 2023. Um, as I said, the demo day will be the, the, the event to uh, award our winning startups. So if you want to be part of this demo day, uh, apply from today on. And also let all your partners, acquaintances, um, other startups that you know of, uh, let them know how they can apply and where they can apply. Uh, just a quick word on on what will happen on April. As I said, you have a seven days uh, stay here in Chile with lots of meetings uh, um, personalized for your needs and also what you are offering for. Um, and you will also be at the industry fair and mining fair Expo Min. These are some of the, these are some of the partners uh, that you can work here with in Chile. These are um, different uh, ventures uh, of the Chilean startup ecosystem. And here are a few more 
for example, Expander from Fundación Chile, who are working with us closely um, in the organi uh, organization of this challenge this year. And this is basically it. Um, uh, if there are any questions, I think uh, you will also have the opportunity to, to write emails. Uh, but uh, first of all, I will let you with um, our links in the chat and I will give over to Mar. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for presenting the Energy Challenge Germany. I already post the links uh, in the chat so that you can find them. And well, from now on, as Michelle said, the application is officially open until December 15th. And now we are uh, close to the end of this event. And for the closing remarks, I would like to call up to the virtual stage Madeleine Collet from Expande Fundación Chile, which is also our partner in this initiative. Please, Madeleine, mm -hmm. are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. We can hear you, we can see you. The okay. stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Madeleine Collet, Technology Manager of Expanded Program in Fundación Chile. We thank AHT Chile and the State of Bavaria Office for South America the invitation to collaborate in Energy, in, in Energy Challenge Germany 2023. As Expanded, we are interested in collaborating with both entities in order to promote the visibility of startups from Germany and Chile, strengthening the relationship between both countries. Expanding is an open innovation program that currently collaborates with the main natural resource companies established in Chile, capturing value for their businesses through high impact technologies that contribute to a more sustainable industry. On this occasion, for the second time, we support this challenge that identifies your German startups that have solutions for the energy transition in Chile. From Fundación Chile and to Expande, we aim to foster innovative solutions that promote the use of cleaner energy in the short to medium term in order to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Expande is in a position to facilitate this process by answering, answering your questions about the application platform. In addition, we invite you to guys visit our website. I put the link in the chat. And social networks where we regularly publish news and new challenges we are managing. Thank you very much for inviting us to participate again. Have a great day, everyone. Okay, thank you very much for the closing words, Madeleine. And with this statement, we have reached the end of the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Germany. For me, it has been a pleasure accompanying you through this event. And don't forget that the application period will be open until December 15th. And every German startup with a solution to foster the energy transition is welcome. So feel free to share the information. And we are looking forward to meeting startups and get to know your solutions. A big thanks from my side and from the whole team to the panelists, participants and partners of this event. And have, an idea, have, have a nice day and see you on the demo day. Bye bye.